We're back on the road this April with our live show, Cocaine Cowboys. If you want to hear the story of Ireland's love affair with Colombian powder and those who made millions in the gold rush, join us in Galway's Town Hall Theatre on Saturday 6th of April, Killarney's INEC on Saturday the 13th of April. Tickets for Belfast's show have sold out on Ticketmaster.ie, but limited availability remains at ulsterhall.co.uk. That's ulsterhall.co.uk. Now, there's a couple of things going on um, in regards to the cases um, that have been taken uh, relating to the crystal meth seizure in Cork. Two people before the courts, James yeah. Lean and Nathan MacDonald, and they've both applied for bail. They, they, they have both applied for bail. So, um, People, uh, when they're charged with offences, um, both Nathan MacDonald and James Lean are charged in connection with the seizure of Crystal Met, that record, uh, Crystal Met Hall, I think it's 32 million euros. So both of these uh, guys had applied for bail in the local courts, but it was sent to the high court. And you hear this again and again, that if 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 people are looking for bail on a very small offence um, that can be given in the local courts, but mostly people have to apply to the high courts where you get kind of a full hearing. Yeah. And as part of that bail hearing, we hear details of the case put forward by the prosecution. Now, it's obviously not a criminal case where a judge is going to decide that evidence is true and therefore, you know, make a decision on it. But it gives an outline of the case that both of these people are facing. Mm. I mean, there's there's Nathan MacDonald, um, was refused bail ultimately this week in the High Court. Um, Nathan MacDonald is... Because very, of the flight risk. Well, the, the, yeah, the, the, the judge basically said that um, the, the, he's facing very serious charges um, and that as a result of the seriousness of the charges and the complex organisation um, that is alleged to have gone into moving the drugs into the into the country, mm-hmm. that it, that she can't be satisfied that he doesn't pose a flight risk. I suppose you heard kind of, um, you know, the evidence uh, from his father who who offered to put forward 100,000 uh, euros in bail money. and That was from his life savings, I think he said. That was his life savings. And the judge um, commended him and she sort of said that she can understand his perspective and there's no, um, I suppose, I, I think the term she 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 gave that there's no, uh, there's no doubt in his sincerity in coming forward to the court and offering that. But basically she said that despite the fact that that's his life savings, it wasn't sufficient money. Right. Um, because she's looking at what what she said was the overall amount of money involved in this operation. As part of these bail hearings we've had um, and the other court appearances, we've had a kind of a description of what the prosecution's case is. And what they've basically described is that this crystal met shipment that was found was came from Mexico to Cork Harbour. Um, it was hidden in... Uh, a very elaborate, I think is how they described it, and sophisticated operation. Um, it was hidden within this machinery um, and then it was due to be moved on to Australia. And it, it is alleged by the, by, the, by the guards and the prosecution that it was a sophisticated plan with a transnational element and Nathan MacDonald's involvement was alleged to have been at an active level. And the court was told then the maximum penalty for that charge would be life imprisonment or could be life imprisonment. And therefore, you know, he would, if if found guilty, he would definitely face a custodial sentence. And the judge said she was not satisfied that there are any conditions that would allay her concerns that Mr. MacDonald was a flight risk. So... I suppose she's saying that given the seriousness of the charge, even yeah. though his father had come forward and she commended him and, you know, he he obviously gave kind of, it's, you know, you can understand um, as, a, as a father, you know, he would he would come forward and, and you know, but that... And to explain, I suppose, for anybody who doesn't understand this process, so they've been placed in custody, they're in jail as they await trial, which could take, you know, more than a year. Some people do remain in custody as they face trial. Others are released on bail. Yeah. And the money that um, Mr. MacDonald was offering up of his life savings was basically a safety net uh, should 
um, his son not appear in court if he was so. In other words, he was putting that forward. It's not that the state takes that money. You sort of keep it on ice, yeah. shall we say. And uh, his son would have been released from custody, you know, under strict bail bonds, which would be probably to hand over a passport and other things yeah, like that. Yeah, probably sign court. on or... Um, now, had he broken his bail, that money then is kept by the state. Exactly. That's how it works, basically. But there was one other little bit, I think, that was heard in the district court, and that was the amount of the crystal meth discovered, 543 kilos, and that has an estimated street value of 32.8 million euro. Yeah. Um, that mach- machine, it was called, so it was a machine, right? Yeah. And so it was being, it was in the port of court, but Cork, but the court heard the machine had been shipped from Mexico and stored in the Bally CD Garden Centre since October. Yes. So, I mean, it's it basically what was said was there was a sophisticated concealment area in the machine um, to hold that four, 543 kilos of cocaine um, and that the prosecution alleged that Mr. McDonald, who's a very well-known businessman, um, he, he was... Uh, a director of the Bally CD Garden Centre had appeared, you know, very well known local person involved with the local chamber of commerce had appeared on uh, TV three a number of times. So a, a well known figure locally, um, but the prosecution alleged that he received, stored, and dispatched the machine from his business, and they claim he was due to get one hundred and fifty thousand euros for his part in the full operation. Um, you know, and in the district court, they also heard that there was footage from February, um, where Mister McDonald was allegedly caught operating a forklift and loading the, the recycling machine into a container. Um, it was a recycling machine? Yeah, recycling machine. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it didn't seem so to this, work. So This machine was shipped from Mexico, was transported from the port to the Bally CD Garden Centre where it remained since October and was then uh, examined back at the port. Yes. It was, it was it was due to be shipped was, on to Australia. Yeah, it was due to be shipped on to Australia and the guards in the court earlier court appearances have claimed phone evidence which showed that Mr. McDonald obtained details from an innocent party in Australia to get a legitimate shipping address. So they they basically claimed there was fraudulent uh, documents going through and the guards also said that the recycling machine in question didn't actually function and was a cover uh, disguise to conceal the drugs. Mm. Now, Mr. McDonald's uh, barrister has already said that his client did not know there was drugs in there. He's not saying that he wasn't aware the machine had been stored on the premises uh, as far, you know, at this point. But what he's saying is that he had no knowledge that there were any any drugs, drugs with there. Sure. However, the, the guards have given evidence that, um, that the whole operation pointed to a transnational criminal organisation being behind the operation. And they opposed bail and said that Mr. McDonald was a flight risk because of the level of money involved. And um, yeah, that little small detail about it being there since October. So that's six months that machine was in the Bally CD Garden Centre. Now, while we're on Bally CD Garden Centre, there's been some changes um, in the directorship of that company. Um, yeah, because you heard also in court that uh, Mr. McDonald, who, as I said, is a well-known businessman and that he had been a director of 11 companies with a combined turnover of between 4.5 and 5 million. Um, and since the court case has begun, since he's been charged, um, those companies have been affected. These companies have been wound down um, and that the owner, there, there's a new company has been set up called Smash Burgers Limited and that's basically going to take over from the old companies. Uh, staff are written to um, so the Bally CD Restaurant Limited ceased trading. Ceased trading. It ceased trading since this. And um, Bally CD Properties, according to uh, the company accounts from it, borrowed €2 million Euro from Limerick firm Ace Home Centre Limited in 2021, giving it a charge over a number of other assets in the Bally CD Group. Um, Bally CD Properties Limited is one of the companies where he was... Nathan McDonald, the chief executive of the Bally CD Group, 
and uh, Bally City Properties, sorry, that's the one that had borrowed that money. Yeah. Um, so you see that the companies have obviously been affected. They've, mm. They have been statements put out um, and staff have been told that their new companies are being set up. Uh, this company called Smash Burgers Limited. Um, this week we reported on how um, Nathan McDonald's wife, uh, Jackie McDonald, who's a well-known uh, Instagram uh, influencer, I suppose um, she has been named as a director in those in this new company, along with Nathan McDonnell. So we'll see those filings are all public documents. Anybody who runs he's the company. He's remained on it. He hasn't come off the direction. He's, he's re- remained on it. Now it can take time um, for yeah. these filings to be made and, and reported on the company register's office. So that can be take a bit of time. Uh, James Lean, his co-accused, was also back in court this week. Um, however, his hearing didn't go ahead. He is also applying for bail in the high court, um, but it just it didn't go ahead because of a timing issue. Uh, James Lean is facing the same charges uh, in relation to the the for sale and supply of the crystal met. He's also facing an additional charge relating to the alleged importation of the drugs. Um, but his basically, as you as you've you know yourself from being in court, these cases pop up and they get put back and mm. that's that's what happened to him. So he will also apply for bail and that will also be in the, heard in the High Court. Maybe some further evidence will be heard there. Um, just before we finish up, Bally City Garden Centre did release a statement in late February um, basically uh, saying that having worked tirelessly to provide a local hospitable service to the people of Tralee and Kerry at Bally CD Home and Garden since its foundation in 1992, the family wish to express our sincere gratitude for the continued support during this difficult time. Our focus is on trying to protect the 140 roles that exist within the company, their families and wider community that the business is an integral part of. I noticed it was open there today. I just actually happened upon the website, the Belly CD um, gar- Home and Garden Centre. Yeah, I suppose, look, it, all these things show is somebody is charged and uh, Nathan McDonald is charged. And it, then, of course, there's so so many ripple effects and his, does, his yeah. father has, has come in and his wife now. So um, and they're obviously innocent people. And, you know, th- this is this is. And his uh, family want him out of custody. As exactly. Well as yeah. OK. All right. Well, we'll we'll leave it at that for the moment because exactly. we have to stay within the parameters of what we can discuss legally in this case while it's all before the courts. Absolutely. Thanks, Niall. Thanks, Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.